Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video for you. Today I'm talking about the data science interview process. Any interview process in any industry can be daunting. And data science, because the field is so new, can be especially intimidating. Now, I'm here to tell you that this process can actually be fun, especially if you know what to expect throughout it. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the phases of the data science interview, what you can expect in each one, and I'll also give you a couple tips to help you succeed in each one of these individual interviews. If you enjoy this video, please hit that like button. And if you wanna see more videos at the intersection of data science and sports analytics, please consider subscribing to my channel. Also, this video is based off of a Medium article that I wrote. So if you want a little bit more of an in-depth look into this whole process, consider reading that. It's linked in the description below. So before we get started, interviews and data science can be very different across different companies. This is a condensed version, a kind of generalized version of the interview with a lot of elements that you can expect to see at a bunch of different companies. I'm also going to jump straight into the interview process rather than talking about the application process and the resume building process. That's content for another video in the future. All right, so without further ado, let's jump into the first phase of the interview process, which is the phone screen. So this interview is usually pretty short. It's 15 to 30 minutes. And you'll either talk with a technical recruiter if you're interviewing at a larger company, or perhaps even a data science manager if you're interviewing at a smaller company. Now, this interview is focused mainly on assessing fit, as well as understanding if you have the correct tools, the correct experience for the role. So they'll generally ask you about some of the different tools that you would use on the job, and they might ask you about some of your past project experience where you used some of these. So a couple tips to succeed here. So the first is, especially if you're interviewing with a recruiter, to show that you're passionate and interested about the company. So make sure you got, kind of go through your resume, you, you think internally about why you'd want to work at a company like this, and make sure that that comes through in the actual conversation that you're having. Also, definitely do your research. It helps if you know a little bit about the company, especially something related to current events with the news. I would brush up on the job description that they posted, the job listing, and make sure that you have a story about why or how you're, you're qualified to use any of the tools or the skills that are listed there. So after you complete that first phase, you'll generally be invited to participate in a some form of take home test. So this can come in really two different versions. So the first is they'll give you a data set that they expect you to analyze. Sometimes they'll have a question about, you know, why did uh, why did sales drop off or like can you build a a model that predicts XYZ to a certain accuracy. The other option is they might give you a take home coding exam. So in that coding exam, you will log on to a platform where one of uh, the interviewers will, will, will watch you go through a coding question, or you might be unmonitored and have to tackle a coding question on your own with a specific time limit. For the data set interview, I always recommend exploring any extra data that might not be included. So if they don't explicitly say, only use the data that we give you, feel free to collect some, append some, that can open some eyes, that shows that you're thinking outside of the box. Also, feature engineering and understanding if it's important to use feature reduction in the analysis is something that can set you apart. A lot of people will just throw together a model and everyone can tune a model, not everyone can think about what actually goes into the model and how that impacts the, the accuracy or whatever scoring metric you're using after you've done the analysis. A couple other ways that you can spice up this data analysis is if you really spend some time focusing on making the visuals interpretable to business stakeholders. I know a lot of data scientists can kind of get, get caught in the weeds and, and really focus on the quality of the analysis, which is important, 
but it's also important to be able to under, you know, to explain your findings to people that are not as data savvy. The last thing you can do if you, you know, really want to take that extra step is to make your model an actual API endpoint or a web app. That's something that is probably, it's actually definitely overkill, but it will absolutely set you apart from a lot of the other candidates. For a coding assessment, unless you're applying for a machine learning engineer position, it probably won't be overwhelmingly difficult. They'll usually let you choose what programming language you want to perform this assessment in. And the questions will be at a, you know, a borderline beginner level. Now, even if they aren't that difficult, honestly, personally, these are terrifying to me. Um, there's something about coding or problem solving in a time limit, especially if you have someone watching you. So don't worry, everyone gets nervous in these, but the best way to actually perform well and not get nervous anymore is if you practice in a similar setting. So just practice, practice, practice as much as you can. I recommend, you know, lead code. There's a bunch of other websites that have some programming focused questions. And the more you do these things, the better you get at them. Now, if you want to simulate some other, uh, some other ways of doing this, you can always have one of your friends look over your shoulder, shoulder while you code, or you can try and simulate that same environment where you're doing a live interview with some of your peers. So assuming the phone screen and the actual assessment go fairly well, this is when they will bring you into the office for an on-site interview. You'll usually interview with two to five people and then they'll send you home and, and tell you when they'll, they'll reach out to you. But so with these interviews, they can come in any order the next couple phases because they're largely dependent on the schedules of the people who are interviewing you. So the third phase of this process is usually with a data scientist who is on the team you would be working on. They will ask you about your project background and you really have to explain any of the projects that you've worked on that are on your resume in great detail. They might ask you a couple technical questions as well. Usually these are more related to statistics than they are to the coding portion. If they have any questions about the assessment you performed, they'll usually ask them here. Most of these data scientists have actually done this assessment before, so they might get more into the data cleaning, the data manipulation, and some of the logic behind the methodology that you used. In terms of tips here, I would really recommend going through your resume and looking at each of the projects that you've done. Make sure you understand the math behind any of the algorithms that you've used there, and make sure you understand the logic for, for any of the decision-making in those processes. I would also review some of the general data science questions that are out there. There's a link to a decent list in the description below. I would also go through your assessment and think of any things that you would have done differently. Most data scientists find it impressive that you can look back in retrospect and say, hey, this is a decision that I would have made where that I think I could have improved upon. And finally, if you are going to be working with this person in the future, you know, potentially, you should try and get to know them through asking questions. Ask about their background, their experience, and how they've enjoyed working with that company. So the fourth phase of this process is usually an on-site coding exam. So that same data scientist that, that just interviewed you might open a computer and have you work through either a coding problem or a SQL problem. If you've already done a coding assessment, SQL is more likely. If you've already done a coding assessment, this part of the process also might be skipped. So they'll either have you work on a computer or they'll have you work on a whiteboard to query some data, to, to do some joins, etc. A few tips that I have here is to just brush up on your SQL, make sure you know the, the basic query structure, especially group by and having clauses. I would also make sure you understand the different types of joins and the differences what a self-join is, and how to use subqueries effectively. All right, so the fifth phase of this interview process is usually with one of the people managers. You might interview with the director of data science, the a data science manager, or even the VP of analytics. 
and they'll want to focus on your fit for the team as well as understanding your goals for the future with the organization. So you can expect questions about your projects, more focused on the logic and the story or, or the, the reasoning behind making certain decisions rather than the actual technical aspects of it. In addition to that, you'll probably get a lot of questions about what you'd like to learn on the job and where you expect to be down the road if you were to get this role. A couple of tips here. First, I would ask in some of the earlier phases about the team structure, perhaps some of the project management methodology that, that they use on the team. This is something that you can fill in or, or, or ask more questions about in this phase of the interview. In addition to that, you should think about what you would like to get out of this role, what you would like to learn on the job, and what type of trajectory you would like to have at the organization. Would you like to continue in an individual contributor role, or would you potentially like to be managing data scientists or something like that? So the last phase of the interview process here is usually the debrief. This can be with someone in HR, either the technical recruiter that reached out to you or that you've had most communication with, or if you're in a smaller company, you might even have a conversation with the CTO or the CEO. This is, again, almost purely based on fit and figuring out if you would be in the right place with the company culture and the way that they run the organization there. From my experience here, they'll generally ask you a couple questions, again, fit related, and then let this evolve into more of a conversation. So if you're talking with especially the CTO or the CEO, it's, it never hurts to compliment them a little bit in terms of you know, saying how much you enjoyed the previous interviews, how excited you are about uh, the process and the things that they're doing there. That passion really shows through and that is something that has been proven to be one of the best indicators of good performance on the job is the excitement about the role, excitement about the work and the excitement about the people that you're working with. Uh, obviously this list isn't all inclusive there are plenty of other people that could interview you or, or, or could sit in on the interviews. I've had plenty of interviews where multiple people interviewed me at the same time. And I think that that is becoming more and more common because how often do we really have one-on-one -on -one meetings in the workplace? Now, a couple of the other people that could interview are project managers, especially if you're gonna be working with them, them daily. It's important to understand some of the, the basic project management philosophies in general. You might also talk with business stakeholders. That is something that is increasingly common where if you're going to be giving information research directly to them, why wouldn't they meet with you, with you and try and vet you beforehand? It's important to talk about how you convey information and the way that, you know, and understanding the way that they like information presented. You might also meet with one of the heads of HR and again, this is largely a fit interview, especially if the company is very focused on culture. The last group that might interview you is either software engineers or data engineers. If you're working very closely with them, this makes a lot of sense. They might also actually perform that, that SQL portion of the interview, so be prepared for that. My one last piece of advice here is to make sure that you just do your homework and you prepare. That is what all of these interviews are about. I personally research a lot on each of the people that is interviewing me. I try and understand what their background is and if we have anything in common. The interpersonal connection, kind of this behavioral portion of the interview, in my opinion, is just as important as the technical. And I've seen companies hire data scientists, engineers, et cetera, based on their excitement about the role and their belief in their potential over some kind of meddling technical skills. I genuinely hope that this video has demystified some of the data science interview process here. I know that once I kind of got a feeling for what this looked like after doing a ton of interviews, it was a lot easier and I was a lot less nervous in each next one that I did. So thank you so much for watching. Please comment any questions that you have in the, in the section below and good luck on your data science journey.